Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I've got another video for you and this time we're talking about the differences between a Japanese university and university in Europe or like the West. Especially I'll be talking about the differences uh, between Belgian University, so my home university is Belgium. <laughs> and then um, the Japanese university I studied at because there are a lot of differences so yeah if you're interested keep on watching and don't forget to subscribe give a comment leave a comment and like it will really help my channel out and you know the YouTube ill algorithm is really into um, likes and shares these days so yeah if you could do that it would really help my channel out thank you so without further ado let's jump in so the first big difference between a Belgian university and some other European universities and Japanese universities it's that there are no entrance exams. Um, in Belgium when you graduate from high school at least if you graduate from um, the higher level of high school you can just enter uh, into university without taking any exams you just need to go um, to the application center or something like that of the university to um, uh, to register as a student at that university and uh, then you can choose your major freely you don't need to pay any uh, fees just yet um, so yeah it's a very easy process I remember when I went to uh, register as a student at KU Leuve the entire process didn't take more than like 20 minutes or something and I even got like a sports card and culture card and all those extras with it so it's very easy easy. The only exception is um, if you want to study uh, medicine in Belgium you will have to take an entrance exam. Um, that's to ensure that the students who will um, study medicine uh, a have like the necessary knowledge and intelligence to pursue their studies and two they will get through their first years without too much trouble uh, and on the other hand we have Japan which always has an entrance exam um, at the end of their high school career they take an, uh, like a general um, exam on multiple kinds of topics and based on that they will get a grade and some universities will accept grades from that that level onwards while other ones are like a little bit more lenient and you can get into that university uh, more easily and usually there's like even two exams like one is that general one that everyone takes at the end of high school and one is like an uh, entrance exam for a specific university you want to enter so yeah university student uh, no high school students in uh, Japan have to study a lot a lot a lot this is not to say that uh, Belgian university students don't study a lot because they have to study a lot too but like like the pressure is a little bit different and we usually don't study until um, 10 at night or like midnight every single school day that's ridiculous so yeah that's the first difference then the second really big difference between Japanese universities and Belgian universities and even this is even quite different all over the world but that's the price of tuition um, Belgium has a really good education system actually and um, education is really affordable um, basically if, if you are a university student you have to pay either uh, about 900 euros a year for like one entire academic year 900 euros that's like maybe like a little bit more than a thousand dollars and um, if you like a student who is in a situation where it's economically difficult because of circumstances with your family or because of sickness and all those kinds of things then you um, only have to pay about a hundred euros so yeah it's like really really affordable even housing so um, dormitories aren't that expensive in Belgium usually the prices vary from somewhere from 100 euros a month to like 500 euros a month but those are like really high end already and I know not not a lot of people have such expensive um, dorms yeah while Japanese students um, they have to pay quite a lot like at least from my perspective they have to pay a lot of money to study a year uh, my boyfriend even he has to pay like almost 5,000 euros per semester so that means like you have to pay that twice a year just to be a student there and like pay and that won't, won't consist of like 
prices like the fees you have to pay for your books or your transportation or the food you eat there so yeah that's quite a lot of money and uh, I, I still I do know this is still different from the uh, from other countries where uh, many people take student loans but um, still it's a lot of money if you come from a country where getting a student loan is like something really uh, uncommon is really unheard of uh, and only in very special cases will you need to do that then difference number three wait this is not free wait this is free <laughs> I can't do free yeah okay difference number three is the amount of classes that Japanese um, students have at university uh, versus the amount of classes Belgian students have at university as I said before like Japan has an entrance exam and people study really hard in high school but then I felt like it's just not because I was an, inter an exchange student but I also talked with some um, regular students and it seems like the, their workload at university is a lot less like you can hear them say often oh let's go play like although Belgian universities too they go out they have fun with friends they go eat something together their workload is crazy most of the time like oh my gosh I remember when I uh, was in my first and second year of my bachelor's degree I virtually was working around the clock like the work would just never end I would start like most of my classes would start at 9 in the morning so that means I would get up I would go to school um, like to my campus I would have classes usually until 6 with like a one hour lunch break in between then I came home I did my homework like Belgian universities give a lot of homework and like I studied until 10 and then like oh yeah I have to eat dinner like I eat dinner and then it's just like washing up and you go to bed and it was every day again and even during the weekend I didn't have much time to do anything else so yeah it was really really difficult and because of that difficulty many people drop out in the first uh, few years but then as you go on and you become an older student the workload becomes a little bit more manageable and um, although it's still a lot of work it's more um, self-study so you work on your by yourself and then while I was in Japan I only had like about 10 classes 10 hours of class a week maybe let's say yeah eight or nine classes are what I took and I know Japanese students they usually take like three classes a day ish sometimes a little bit more or less it just like depends on what they're studying but uh, in general they don't really have to work that much and also I feel like the contents of the um, classes are a little bit easier like this is not to um, to insult anyone or to insult the Japanese education system uh, I'm very sure that I'm really sure that there are very, really many good um, points about it but just because the Belgian bachelors are three years and Japanese degrees are usually four years I feel like they take it a little bit more slowly like they just have a little bit more relaxed schedule since they have four years to complete all of that information while three, three year bachelors in Belgium just cram everything into like those three years and just like very difficult yeah so that's the third difference then um, a funny fourth difference that I noticed while I was studying in Japan is that they usually have mandatory attendance in class but like not usually sometimes it depends um, yeah so sometimes in class like this paper will go around and you have to write your name on it or like the teacher will call uh, for a student's name and then you check the list of attendance and if you like are um, absent more than a certain amount of times then you get like worse grades or you can't even take the exam so yeah I was really surprised by that because in Belgium you either go to class or you don't go to class it doesn't matter it's just up to you to your own responsibility to um, know what you have to study and to show up for the exam um, there are a few exceptions of course but in general mandatory attendance is not common the fifth big difference between Japanese university life and Belgian university life is how the um, academic year is spread out um, in Japan in Japan usually the academic year starts in spring so it means around the beginning of April the end of March around there the academic year starts then it, the first semester runs until 
july the end of july and then they have like a summer break and then somewhere in september sometimes even october the second semester starts and that one runs until the end of january or the beginning of february depends on how many exams you have and then you have like a long spring break um yeah so that's how a japanese academic year looks like while in belgium or many other western countries um, academic years often start in september or october it depends on university but uh, usually um, universities in belgium start at the last week of september or the first week of october and then we don't have any breaks until the last of december the end of december and then after uh, your exams which last the entire month of january you have one week usually one week of um, a break and then yay the second semester starts uh, and then the second semester runs through the runs from the beginning of february so the second week of february until um the end of May and in between we have a two week uh, Easter holiday break so that's nice but that also needs to be used for studying and then after um, at the end of May we have another study break a little bit like one week two week depends on which study you're doing and then we have exams again in the entire month of July and then finally we have a big break uh, from uh, the beginning of July until the end of September we have basically have three months of free time then big difference number six uh, is that Japanese students actually have a job before or most of the time they have a job before they graduate in their junior years uh, so their third year of university they start um, this thing that they call shukatsu job hunting and um, through their third year in, in the fourth year especially they go to job interviews they write CVs like many of them they go to internships and all those things and um, they try to get job offers and like um, that means that when they graduate at the end of their fourth year at, in springtime then they can immediately enter the company so that's very different from how things usually go in Belgium in Belgium you're not doing any job hunting well most of them, most students don't do any job hunting while they're still studying um, most importantly because they're so busy and also because that's not the tradition or how it usually goes for job hunting in Belgium um, usually job hunting only starts after you've graduated um, and we don't have a specific season for uh, recruiting new employees uh, employees can be employees can be recruited all year round and um, yeah some people get a job right after they graduate while others have to search for way more for way more have to search for a re really long time yeah so that's not a difference we have difference number seven what's this what am i doing <laughs> uh difference number seven is that belgian students tend to go back and forth between their hometown and their dorm uh, belgium is a quite a tiny country you can drive from the east border into to the west border in like two two and a half hours usually so um that means like everything is quite accessible and since it's so tiny belgium people feel like oh it's so far away if i have to drive an hour like i, I feel the same way um, so that's why many students go uh, on a dorm from monday till friday or until they don't have classes anymore and then they return home in the weekend with the train usually um, since that takes most of the time one hour two hours at max and yeah it's just a tradition of Belgian students but that's something that students in uh, Japan don't seem to do at all um, I've heard about students who have dorms but they usually stay there for longer periods of time and only go back uh, to their hometown um, during long vacations and most students commute every day back and forth to school for like anywhere between not a, a 15 minutes to like an hour my commute to to my home university that my commute to my university in japan too took usually with transferring and everything included like one hour and 15 minutes or something so yeah it's just a really big difference and it's also because the scale of the country is like way bigger <laughs> then difference number eight yes <laughs> is that uh japanese students are usually quite busy with circles and clubs 
and they're like very hardcore in it like you have to attend and you have to uh, do all the activities and you can't really skip or like you can't skip but like they'll say something about it while Belgian students uh, either don't go to such a club or they have like a special kind of association but um, it's really not that like if you don't want to come one day or like it's not something it's not a daily thing like they might meet up once a week and they have a special activity like once a month or something but it's not as uh, in intensive as in Japan then I would say that the difference number nine can I still move my fingers yes I can <laughs> is that uh, in Belgium it's sometimes very arbitrary in what lang what languages are used as a medium of teaching um, in Japan I've heard people being taught in English or in Japanese most of the time and other languages if they're taking a language specific course but in Belgium you sometimes get really confused like uh, a course which is uh, stated on the paper like it will be taught in Dutch like suddenly has like an, a, the professor who doesn't speak Dutch so he just teaches in like English I've also had the case like a Belgian professor who does speak Dutch suddenly starts to teach the class in French like I don't know it's just a really weird thing and last but not least we've got difference number 10 <laughs> difference number 10 is about class participation um, this is not to say that Japanese students don't participate in class it's just a difference in uh, in customs in teaching um, Japanese students are more used to just sitting back and listening and paying respect to the teacher like not questioning what they are saying um, so they won't really like like put their hands up and start asking questions by themselves and will only like start talking if they are addressed directly by the teacher while Belgian students are a little bit more proactive I would say they if they don't understand something if they don't agree with something they'll just like raise their hand and then the teacher says yeah yeah what, what's your question what do you want to say and then we can have a discussion and also uh, lectures aren't, aren't usually really uh, based on just talking of the teacher it's usually like a discussion between students and the teacher uh, and it's a little bit more active while in Japan you just need to sit and listen usually so yeah those were 10 differences I noticed between Belgian European universities and then Japanese universities while I was studying abroad um, yeah I hope you like these differences if you're studying abroad too please leave me a comment what you thought was different from your home university uh, yeah it would really help my channel and please like uh, this video give a big thumbs up and subscribe so next week we have another in another uh, Next week we have another interesting video coming up so definitely look forward to that. Thank you! See you next time!